Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again. In today's video, my smug, jealous neighbor claims my brand new car is stolen and calls the cops on me. I teach him a lesson he won't forget. Here is what happened. Subscribe to Ripe on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. And the first one starts like this. I would often hear friends complain about having horrible neighbors and I thought I knew what they meant. Only after I moved into my new house a couple of years back did I truly understand what that is like. Growing up I had neighbors who would be angry for accidentally messing up their garden or for being too loud. I would be pretty annoyed with them but nothing prepared me for the category 4 hurricane that lived next to me during my 20s. I had heard from other people who lived in the street next to me that my immediate neighbor Lee had a cold war going on with the previous resident of the house I now lived in. One of them even said that Lee was the reason the last resident decided to move away. He is incredibly petty and he makes no effort to hide his jealousy. It's very obvious that the fact that my house is the biggest on the street is the main reason he is horrible to anyone who lives in it. Lee is incredibly jealous. He has this tiny Pomeranian that has been trained to take a dump right in front of my gate every day. The dog is taken out for a walk before the sun rises so no one can ever say that it is Lee's dog who does this but that's evident as there is no one else who owns a pet dog on our street. And this was only the beginning. There is a tree in my front yard that he once tried to cut down. He claimed the shadow of the tree covered his garden so the flowers never bloomed. The real reason his plants kept withering was because I have never seen him water them at all but he refused to listen to reason. The person who lives in the house opposite to me spotted him trying to chop down my tree so we managed to make him stop and threatened to call the cops if he refused to leave immediately. He left after that but not before swearing to get revenge. I knew he was watching my every move since that day so he could find anything at all on me. It felt like he made calling the cops on me his life's mission. I made sure I never screwed up in front of Lee in any aspect whatsoever which was not very hard because I lead a pretty straightforward life and everything that I own is because I worked hard for it. Right after I finished my high school I started hustling to make a name for myself in the IT sector. I juggled college and work which allowed me to gain more experience than other people my age. This is how I managed to buy my own house at 24 and then a BMW i8 at 26. The car was the tipping point for Lee. He was much older than me so it is understandable that he would be confused as to how someone younger than him could own a better car than him but it would have made sense to him if he had acknowledged the fact that he was an alcoholic. He should not even be allowed to drive most days and I know he is drunk half the time even at his workplace. But he still refused to accept that just because he is not capable of affording an expensive car someone who works much harder than him could be. Lee was the first one to come talk to me when the BMW first arrived. He went on to make a huge scene out of jealousy and then accused me of having stolen the car. The man had already decided that I could not possibly own something nicer than him fair and square so he demanded that I hand over the keys. When I yelled at him and told him there's no way I'm letting him anywhere near my new car he called the police on me. He first told them that I had stolen the car but I was clearly unbothered as I had all the necessary legal documents. I even wanted them to come just so I could prove it to him without a doubt that the car is mine. But Lee could tell from my indifferent demeanor that just a stolen car complaint would not trouble me at all. He went on to tell them that I deal drugs at a large scale which is how I managed to purchase my house in the first place. This statement genuinely pissed me off. Where I am from dealing drugs is a very serious accusation. The police spared no time in rushing over to my house after that. I still did not think it would amount to anything because his accusation was obviously false. I should have realized that a man that spent so long brooding over my success would certainly have something up his sleeve. I would have to admit that I was a little stunned when they actually found a small package of white substance on my porch. 
I was terrified about what it could mean if the packet was actually cocaine, but once the policeman took me to the station and tested the substance, they discovered that it was just flour. Lee did get himself into a tight situation, but since there was no concrete evidence that he planted the flour on my porch, the police could not actually do anything more than extract the fine for false information. Once I had gotten back home, I went through the footage on my house's security camera. After hours of going through the same thing, I finally found video proof of Lee tampering with the chair on my porch and placing something near it. This meant I had everything I needed to get Lee into so much more trouble than just a fine, but going through footage for so long had tired me out. It did not make sense that I had to sacrifice so much of my time just to bring someone else problems. If I did that, I would be no different from Lee, so I decided to let it go. Cut to two years later, when that monster somehow conned an amazing woman into marrying him. It was an arranged marriage and Lee had lied about everything from his wealth to his actual personality. At first I assumed that anyone who would marry someone as vile as Lee would be just as vile as him, but once I spoke to her I realized she was extremely different from her husband. Lee did not seem to appreciate that, I started seeing bruises on her that she would try to hide, but once I grew a little closer to her, she confided in me that he would abuse her every time he drank. This was pretty much every day at this point, it was so infuriating to see such a kind soul be treated like that, but she was too scared to go to the police because he might get angrier in case it goes south. This was when I remembered that I had footage that could get him locked up long enough for her to be safe and build her case on the charges of domestic violence. After we got him arrested for falsifying evidence and lying to the police under oath, it did not take much to get a divorce approved. I put up with him for so long, but abusing someone was the last straw. Anyway, he is gone for a good long time now and I am glad she is happier after being freed from him. And the next one is titled, X tried to destroy me, I got revenge. The following story occurred over the course of 13 to 8 years ago. And I apologize preemptively for the length because it is a bit involved. I was in a relationship for 9 years with a girl I met in college. We broke up on the cusp of my 29th birthday. While breakups and divorce are never trauma free, this one was as close to that as I believe is humanly possible. There were no fights and minimal drama and I moved to a new city to get a fresh start and be nearer to my dad, stepmom and half-sisters as I am close to them and it was nice to have family during this. Get an apartment, start over, everything is good. And then I meet her. Things with her seemed good at first, she was the polar opposite of my ex. She is quiet yet nice, had her life relatively together. My first wife was very unfocused and horrible with money, physically a complete contrast while in the bedroom. I thought I had hit the jackpot, anywho, I fall for her heart. We had a whirlwind romance, move in shortly and we have this glamorous life where we make good money. She was a corporate accountant, I had a decent small business, we are pulling in 150k plus combined. We are renting a luxury apartment, one car paid and the other brand new. No kids. Things are great except that we drink too much together and some other underlying issues I am blind to at the time. We get soused one night and drive to Vegas and get married on the strip after 6 months of dating and 9 of knowing each other. The ink is barely dry on my divorce papers from version 1.0 but no matter, I'm in love. My family likes her overall, her family loves me. We adopt cats, we talk about trying to have a kid. We then upgrade our life, take on more debt, just as the housing bubble bursts and the economy tanks, she loses a couple jobs due to her inability to show up on Mondays and I start losing clients as the ones I have start cutting their advertising budget, which was my field. Things start to get pinched and she first starts complaining, then gets petulant because now we cannot spend the way we used to, the quarterly mini vacations dry up and we are cooking at home instead of going out to eat 4 times a week. We basically stop having intercourse a little more than a year into the relationship. I did not realize it then because I was dumb and love blind, but she cheated on me during this period. Realizing what we were up against with our normal bills plus our credit cards, I go out and get a job bartending at a posh resort, the only other real skill I have at the time that is marketable. 
I get two other part-time gigs to help make ends meet, she still complains and throws me an ultimatum before I even start getting paychecks, laying the blame at my feet. I say fine, screw this then, had we stuck it out even a few more months, things would have started to turn a financial corner. Instead though, she goes too full-faced mean-spirited witch on me. The first night we first fight, she attempts to end her own life by scratching her wrist with a leatherman, then calls 911, gets admitted to the hospital. I arrive home to cops telling me this and have the security guard toss me when I show up to see if she is okay because she doesn't want to talk to me. I used the quotes because there was a small collection of firearms nearby I bought for her target shooting hobby, which were untouched, so it was obviously just a ploy for attention. We basically fight for the next week, I give her everything she wants, which includes leaving the house, signing over my new truck to her, and only taking stuff I brought into the relationship, basically enough to fill a small storage space. She is financially pinched, so I sell my office furniture for cash and don't even touch the bank account. Just take my business money and one CC I got separate from her. I go to the Bay Area for a few months, financially struggle, don't get the job I was sure was on lock. During this time I have this revelation one evening, I drink too much and that it's caused a load of problems in my life. So I quit and I have not touched a drop since. Broke and realizing nothing I try is working, I come back to town, live with my dad for a month, find a roommate and then a crap retail job. My business has dropped from 7 to 8k per month at its height to now around 500 per month. I bike everywhere because I cannot afford a car and my credit is toast partially due to her love of spending on plastic, so I am facing bankruptcy. I am 31 and this is really humbling, but whatever, I am alive, have dealt with the hardship before and this won't last forever. She has kept her house, declared personal bankruptcy on her debt, keeps her car and has been dating a series of men starting a couple weeks after we split. While I never ask the details, apparently she has also reached out to a few of my friends and badmouthed me a bit. This would be mildly annoying, but add in two factors. She is dragging her feet on the divorce due to not having money to file, keeps up contact on the pretense of us needing to talk, but plays emotionally manipulative head games during the whole sequence. I've realized I still love you, that's why you can make me cry so easily, and other BS hallmark movie lines like this. Also, we live in a suburb that is smaller and tightly knit, so multiple places I go to, like my church, the bookstore I frequent and the coffee shop right by my place, she talks endless crap to people. Says I was a cheater and physically and emotionally abusive, complete crap but whatever, I am stalking her, I supposedly stole tens of thousands of dollars from her the whole nines. Some people actually believe her, I even get threatened by a wannabe biker one night that is literally twice my age with violence, itself it's a funny story but not the point. Finally, after some more BS and back and forth, she leaves town, more falsehoods around this including her borrowing a bit of money she didn't end up paying back and sticking me with a massive overage on our cell bill right before we split the account. My dumb trusting heart hurts, but I am mostly relieved to see the last of her, realizing she is only nice to me when she wants something. She goes to NY to check up with another guy, gets pregnant 50 minutes later. Finally then sends me divorce paperwork. I sign it and send back quickly, all notarized documents, everything organized and flagged. She attempts to be friends and I want no part of this BS. I am businesslike, she gets upset. She then screws up filing, blames me, I say whatever, straighten out the court issues. One week after the divorce is finalized, the kid is born. No word from her after that for two years, thank god. So I get a new career, start advancing in it and start dating a new woman that I am still with 10 years later. Weirdly enough, they knew each other and she didn't like her. Partially because one of my ex-infidelity partners was her ex-husband, during a time they were exploring patching things up for the kid's sake. Though there were multiple reasons for her distrust, apparently she always gave my wife an icky, intuitive feeling. So flash forward two years, I get a call from my current squeeze. She's just talked to a friend who was also a very brief roomie of her after our split. She is breaking up with the baby daddy. There is a custody fight, he is saying he doesn't know if it is his. Will I help her? Well, it's the right thing to do, so even though I don't trust or particularly like her, I say yes. 
I get the call and a sob story, most of it doesn't add up. He took the kit but thinks it is actually mine. To prove paternity I would need to come to NY and take a paternity test at one of their facilities. Also he hit her, put a GPS tracker on her, brother is a Russian mobster who threatened her, all very far fetched. Needless to say, even without this fanciful tale, I generally assume if this woman is talking, it's a lie. So I am suspicious. Her lawyer calls me and he seems like a clueless schmuck. I get a letter from him, very unprofessional and not even on a letterhead. Every other legal document I have seen has from the law offices of blah blah on it, but this is literally just of a laser printer and says verbatim. I XYZ am the ex-husband of YZ8 and was married to her from <laughs> to <laughs> I have no legal interest in the child. Super shady. Not wanting to end up in a situation where I have allowed myself to be legally effed over, I make my own lawyer consultation appointment. Before I can even go, the baby daddy finds me on Facebook and sends me a message. Between calls with him, his lawyer and the impartial lawyer NY state appoints for the child's welfare, I get a very different story. He knows it is his, he had a paternity test done on the sly at birth because she had been promiscuous before they got together and she was pregnant so quickly he was concerned. They broke up because she was drinking too much, he busted her with a bottle of vodka as she was driving with the kid in the car. She stood up in court, claimed I was actually the father and she had no idea where to find me. He found me in 10 seconds online, I'm a tech guy with massive social media presence, a tech blog, multiple writing credits on publications, my damn name as a domain, plus I've had the same cell phone number for 14 years. Also the other BS was just that he is an IT guy for a university and his brother works for a carpet cleaning chain. Plus just like in our relationship he never hit or stalked her so she not knowing what I know starts sending me text messages. I say filled out and on its way back to your lawyer and toss it in the trash. I am so tempted to send her some poetic message about how the truth is coming back to haunt her but I resist. Because I am not doing this for her but rather for the sake of their son and his father so let's keep my ego out of it. I provide legal statements to all in the court, tell them I know it is not possibly mine because I had not been with her since April 15th of 08, the kid's birthday is in September of 09. I remember the date because due to Texas I got F twice that day. Explain when she was in NY, which is the likely dates of conception, prove I was thousands of miles away on the west coast, tell them to look through her social media where she meticulously tagged herself and took tons of pictures of even their mundane locations. Provide a blood sample to a local lab, tell them salacious details about her drinking and occasional drug use, including her abuse prescriptions and a previous hospitalization where she was held for psych evaluation due to taking way too many pills. The court date comes and she gets blindsided, stack of depositions and a collection of statements from me where what sealed the deal apparently and the incredibly stupid game she was running is fully exposed. Gets no custody, no support, supervised visitation once a week. I run into her ex Rumi, upset but instead of giving her attitude I just calmly tell her the scam Jay was running, then let her pull out of me the truth about our split. She is flabbergasted but also a horrible gossip so it gets around town like wildfire. People I barely know including the aforementioned biker all come up to me and apologize for misjudging me. I am years past the stage of having any morbid curiosity to check her social media but every few months she pops up as a suggested friend and I notice bemusedly the number of mutual friends plummets from triple digits to eventually three. Baby's father sends me a massive Amex gift card for Christmas as much as I make in a week at the time. I call and tell him I don't know if I can accept it, I don't want him or anyone to think that I did this for a reward. He virtually begs saying you helped save my family. This is nothing in comparison, thank you. We break down crying on the phone and eventually form an odd distant friendship based on mutual respect for each other. I even had dinner with him a couple times when I had to go to NY for business over the years and I always buy because the poor guy has done enough and gone through enough having to co-parent with this train wreck. To this day she is apparently struggling to stay sober, alcohol and other substances and has minimal involvement in her child's life due to her inability to show up when expected. 
Baby Daddy tells me she has been in legal trouble, financial issues up the butt and a string of boyfriends that never last more than a few months. Personally, I'm doing well, got married again three years ago, raised stepchildren, am reasonably financially successful and rather like my life. Granted, a large part of the story is just karma in action, but I feel like I did the right thing, was not petty and what I did do hit her where it hurts. And yeah, ripe stars, I would absolutely agree with this, OP certainly did the right thing and it was just the right dose of revenge. Either way, if you enjoy the revenge stories, I would very much appreciate it if you could like the video. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.